I was able to take out the three ATMs that weren't doing well, and I was able to go ahead and reassign them to other locations. These other locations, they went off within my third month. By the end of my third month, guys, $3,000 in residual income. Here is basically uh, a day in the life of my shoes at that time. I was working 80 to 100 hour work weeks, guys. I was literally working every single day and I only had one day off, okay? So the fact that I was able to make $3,000 and also only work a couple hours while these machines were doing the work for me, it was magical to me. It was amazing. And for a lot of people nowadays, $3,000 is actually, you know, it's life-changing money. Guys, welcome to this weekly live. I'm gonna be your host, founder of ATM Together, Paul Alex, guys. How's everybody doing today? Guys, it has been a crazy week. A bunch of traveling for business, a bunch of presentations, a bunch of value that I'm providing to thousands of entrepreneurs in the US, in Canada, but now internationally, guys, and it has been amazing. So I'm super pumped for this live training, guys, because we have gems that we're gonna be dropping in this live for you. And if this is the very first time that you're actually tuning in, welcome guys. I'm going to break down who I am, what my company does, and exactly how you can start with your own ATM, automated teller machine business in 2024, guys. Let's go into the lessons, okay? We're going to be talking about how to launch your first ATM in 2024. We're going to be talking about the three biggest mistakes rookies do in the ATM business, guys. That that's including myself. I talk from experience i don't talk from here see i talk from experience guys so i'm going to show you the nuggets on exactly how you guys could avoid these mistakes that i've made when i started the atm business roughly seven years ago and then we're going to talk about is your city or state still good for atms in 2024 all right let's go ahead and get started with the very first lesson guys how to launch your first atm in 2024 now Humble beginnings. Let me tell you a little bit about my background so you guys know exactly what type of expertise I have in this field. So seven years ago, I got introduced by ATMs from an actual coworker when I was in law enforcement. I always tell people I've lived three different lives, guys. I was in corporate America from 21 to 26. I was in law enforcement from 26 to 32. And then the last three, close to three and a half years now, I've been in full-time entrepreneurship, which has been phenomenal and game-changing and has changed the level of thinking that I have, guys, because now I'm able to travel the world. I'm able to help thousands of entrepreneurs. And not only that, but I've also picked up a couple of new skills that I actually love, I'm very passionate about. And ultimately, it's the ripple effect. It's how many people's lives can I change and actually develop so they are able to do whatever they want in life. And that's what it's about, guys. That's the fulfillment, right? So. When it comes down to it, guys, ATMs initially was my vehicle to financial freedom. I always get asked this question, Paul, did you really become a multimillionaire off of ATMs? The quick answer is no. If you know my background story and you guys can actually read my background story on my new book, it's called Blue to Digital Gold, The New American Dream. It's out on Amazon now, guys. It hit bestseller as well in multiple categories. Check it out. It's going to be the best under $20 investment you will ever do. Plus, we'll give you free bonuses regarding like the ATMs. Very detailed step-by-step -step on exactly how you guys can actually execute and get started in 2024 by buying that book. Amazon, or you can go to blue to digital All right. So to continue with the story, guys, um, coworker told me this about seven years ago. Hey, man, you can buy your own ATM. I was like, are you talking about the machine at the gas stations? He's like, yes. I then, guys, I've always been a straight shooter. I've always been like, all right, I'm just going to execute. You know, if I think it's a good idea, I have that gut feeling, I have that intuition, it's usually a good idea. So I went ahead and I executed. So I, I, I went to a couple of locations. Now, remember, before law enforcement, I was in corporate America. So I really knew how to present. I had soft skills. I knew how to articulate myself. So I was able to throw on my old suit, took two weeks off of work, guys, and just hit the streets for two weeks straight, okay? And I was able to actually land six locations. So instead of buying one ATM, I bought six ATMs to start off with um, my very first two weeks. And I was just like, man, this is going to be easy. I'm going to have hundreds of ATMs within one year because I'm the greatest in sales and I could do this and I could do that. And what you don't know is what you don't know, guys. So I 
ultimately ended up falling flat on my face. And let me tell you this, about half of my ATMs, which was six ATMs initially, the first couple months, it didn't do quite well, like I expected, right? At that time, I was estimating that the numbers were going to do anywhere between like 300 or 500 per ATM based on the volume of traffic coming into locations. And then also the money, the uh, the surcharge fee that I was charging at the time, which is around $3.50. I was in California back then, guys. So at the end of the day, we're always used to the high prices. Um, so then with that, about half my ATMs barely did anything, guys. The other three did extremely well, but the, the half of them only did about 50 bucks. And I was traveling quite a bit. At that time, I was driving like a Dodge Ram 1500 with like monster truck tires, guys. I had seven miles per gallon. So I was literally burning my profits away every time I would go load up the machines. And I was just like, sort of sick to my stomach. I was just like, dude, I just invested like over 10 grand in machines and uh, filling up the machines with my own cash. And I'm barely making any profit. Um, is this even worth it, right? And I think for majority of us, especially if we've never started entrepreneurship, that is the first biggest step. It's always self-doubt, right? It's always like, okay, what can work better? So what makes an entrepreneur is essentially you're going to go through these roadblocks, no matter if you start at the at the entry level, where I'm telling you where my story started, or you're at the level five, six, seven years later, where you're a multimillionaire, now you're running multi eight figure companies and you have dozens of employees, you're still going to run into issues. It's just bigger issues <laughs> and that's it. But the issues never stop as an entrepreneur. That's, that's part of the game guys. But the trade-off is you work for yourself or your own boss. You get to control how much you make and then ultimately how much effort you want to put into it because you're building it for yourself. And I always tell people this, you have to have a bigger reason than just money. Okay. Because it sounds cliche, but once you get the money, then what right some of you guys might be like well let's make more money right and that's cool and that's exciting in the very beginning but guys it gets old it gets old just like anything else right so um with that being said you need to have a why my why is my family my why is my mother my my, my father my uh my immediate family and take care of them making sure they're good and that's it i'm a big family guy so when it comes down to it guys i executed on atms uh flat uh fell flat on my face the very first uh initial startup of the ATMs. And then I took the route of actually hiring an expert, a mentor that had thousands of ATMs based out of SoCal, but he had them in, um, throughout the United States. And I was trying to figure out how he was able to land these large accounts. Okay. And at that time he was landing dispensaries. Dispensaries were coming out and they were hitting big. People were like, yeah, I'm going to want to find illegalized edibles, right? Especially in California. So I was trying to land those accounts. I was like, dude, how's this guy getting these accounts? So then um, after, of course, investing in myself, in my self-education, I paid him because you always got to pay people for their time, especially if they're making money or they're where you want to be at, essentially. No one works for free, guys. So when it came down to it, he ended up taking me under his wing. He saw something inside of me because usually he didn't do one-on-one mentor mentorships. And then... Um, I was able to take out the three ATMs that weren't doing well, and I was able to go ahead and reassign them to other locations. These other locations, they went off, and it was awesome. Within my third month, by the end of my third month, guys, $3,000 in residual income, residual semi-passive income, okay? Because you got to think about it like this. Here is basically uh, a day in the life of my shoes at that time. I was working 80 to 100 hour work weeks, guys. I was literally working every single day and I only had one day off, okay? So the fact that I was able to make $3,000 and also only work a couple hours while these machines were doing the work for me, it was magical to me. It was amazing. And for a lot of people nowadays, $3,000 is actually, you know, it's life-changing money because for, for, for some of us, we have to work double jobs. Or for some of us, we have to work dozens of hours of overtime just to make it depending on what city you and state you work in right so at the end of the day three thousand dollars can really really buy back your time and that's what it did it bought back my time but also it changed me it changed my mindset of huh so instead of working harder let me now work smarter and leverage this 
simple process, which is ATMs, which is weird because all my coworkers are like, what type of business is this? Is this so awkward that you're, you're, you're going into ATMs? And I'm like, dude, like it works. <laughs> okay. It works. So I can't, I can't throw any shade on it. And they were like, well, whatever floats your boat, man, tell us when you're a multimillionaire and maybe we'll start listening to you. Right. And then a few years later, what happens? Right. So anyways, so then within 18 months, guys, I had 30 ATMs and for me to say, oh, it was because all I did was grind and went out there and got my locations. No, your network is your net worth. And I want you guys to remember this. So go ahead and comment down below network. And this is a very important key takeaway with this part of the story, guys. Remember that mentor that I paid initially to help me out with the strategies on how to find new locations and then also change my mindset on how to approach uh, certain merchants to actually go and offer my ATM program. Well, that exact same mentor actually became a very close friend of mine. He initially started me with a couple of associates referrals that he had. Okay. Cause the guy, he was already making money. He was making so much money that he, he was just more buying back his time. He had a family, he had a daughter and he's just like, dude, to be honest, I might sell my business in the next few years. So I'm just living off the residuals, you know, just living my best life, living the dream. And I never got that. You know what most people would say that, especially when I was like 18, 21, a lot of entrepreneurs I used to meet when I was in corporate sales used to be like, yeah, I'm living the dream. And I never comprehended that. Okay. But now I do as an adult living the dream is essentially living in your own time, uh, by your own terms, being your own boss, controlling the finances around you and then controlling everything else. Because at the end of the day, with majority of the problems that people have in life, it's usually the money. It comes down to the money and money buys options. And the more options you have, the more opportunities you guys have, the more rooms you're able to get in, the more people you're able to meet. And guess what? You meet the right person or the right group of people that will completely change your life forever. That's why I'm telling you guys, your network is extremely important okay so with that being said 30 atms within 18 months i was making five figures my bills at the time was around six grand i was able to go ahead and actually reduce 80 to 100 hour work weeks to 40 hour work weeks from there i didn't stop guys i got very 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 like you could say my mind just started changing, started developing. And I, I went from literally being a blue collar nine to fiver, right? Right. Like work for somebody, have an established paycheck, um, you know, work as much as I can, work as hard as I can, you know, save, 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 pay off my house, do all this stuff. Right. And that's great. That's essentially what my parents taught me. Um, but after that whole venture with the, the side hustle and the ATMs happened, Something inside me changed me and something changed. And the way I was thinking was just different. And I was just like, well, if I could do this with ATMs, what is stopping me from doing anything else in life? Right. Um, and it was, it was the, it was the one of the true signs of success, even though I've been successful in almost every career that I've done, but this was something for me. And that's what I loved. It was for me. It was mine. Right. So then I went ahead. And I actually jumped on Facebook after not being on social media for 80 years, guys. Believe that or not, right? I actually uh, stopped using social media when I started applying for the police at that time. And I decided to jump back on for research. That's it. Um, I, I don't like social media for personal use. I don't use it whatsoever. I just use it for business. And nowadays, I use it to communicate with you guys. I communicate with my mentees. And sometimes, you know, I'll have family members reach out, but majority of the time, it's usually business. So with that being said, um, I was able to go ahead and actually um, learn digital marketing, guys. And you guys might be like, digital marketing? That sounds too advanced. Guys, I'm telling you something right now. If I can learn it, you can learn it too. So uh, one of the first books that I bought, it was called Digital Millionaire. Okay. And it, and it also sounds, uh, it, it feels so surreal that three years later, after I read that book, I launched my own book, right? Um, it, essentially, uh, it's, it's just very similar concept of the book, but it's just my own life, my own experiences, what I went through. 
And it has already helped hundreds of people in just the past week, guys. I get DMs every single day about re- people sending me pictures of their books saying, thank you for writing this. It will truly change the way you think about life and then about your circumstances and, and just everything that you do after you read it. Whether you don't want to be an entrepreneur, maybe if you want to give it to someone like, let's say, your children, your spouse, just to motivate them. Yeah. I would do that. So books can really change your life. With that being said, so now I run a few multi-million dollar companies through digital marketing. Not only that, I've gotten into merchant services as well, credit card terminals. Um, I'm launching a digital offer next month as well, um, where we're going to be helping the masses. We're going to be helping nine to fibers transition to the online space and it's going to be the very very first program that actually the avatar the client is nine to fivers is aspiring entrepreneurs not digital marketers but aspiring entrepreneurs and it's going to change the game okay so very exciting stuff guys in a in a, in a, in a short summary that's my story within 20 minutes okay uh, so let's get into the lessons now number one when you want to start up with your atm business guys the first thing is the llc okay you're going to go into the LLC. The fastest way to get your LLC is through inkfile.com. Now, once you go ahead and do that, you actually want to get the, the actual most cost-effective package on inkfile.com. You don't need all like the gold package. You don't need the most expensive stuff. No, just the basics. You can get the EIN at irs.gov. If you guys are looking by a step-by-step actual modular or video, my COO, again, I'm Jonas, actually recorded one. He has it in the guides section of this group. Now, if you want assistance with that, one of our teammates can actually help you out with that, guys. Go ahead and comment LLC, and we can have our teammates actually tag you on that video so you guys are able to follow step-by-step step the exact steps that you guys need to set up your LLC, okay? Absolutely free. Free value for you guys. Now, Second thing is setting up your bank account. I'm actually going to be talking about this in the second lesson, which is, which is the three biggest mistakes for ATM rookies. So we'll dive into that in the second lesson. Okay. So mind you, you need a business checking account. You can't get a personal checking account. You need a business checking account. The third thing is finding an ATM processing company and also ATM supplier. I'm also going to be talking about this in lesson two. You have to be very careful. Get three bids, no matter what company you're thinking of going with, or if you've already thought of what company you're going to go with make sure they're going to give you exactly what you need for different people there's different programs there's different services i always tell you that we're not the right fit for everybody we're usually our avatar our client is the client that probably only has a few hours a day to work on their business or they don't have any time at all that's why we're typically a little bit more pricier than the rest but the reason why is because we offer the most value okay we're customer service oriented we have our guarantees and we actually get people results we have over three thousand clients in the past three years for a reason guys you know if we were a smaller let's say iso independent sales organization or smaller company where it was only like myself and one other person we would probably only be able to manage five people at the end of the day i'm not a big fan of over leveraging what i have as far as um logistics and fulfillment because i've gone through horror stories in the very beginning of my entrepreneurship career and i understand what it takes to actually fulfill what you promise to people and we're good on that that's why you'll see here you'll see us for the long term okay we do things the right way now with that being said i'll be talking more about atm processing and then the actual uh, atm supplier in the second lesson from there guys the biggest needle mover in this business is location, location, location. Okay. So when you are thinking about this business, you got to understand this in order to find a decent location, it's going to take you a minimum of a hundred hours. So if you don't have a hundred hours to invest into this business, because yes, you have to invest your time and funds into starting a business, any business. But if you're looking for services where they're actually going to find a location for you, make it easier for you, knock out a lot of the work, there is services like that, but you get what you pay for at the end of the day. You guys can pay for services anywhere where they can find you a location, but guess what? Once they find you the location and they give you the information and they'll probably more than likely ghost you, 
And to me, that's a no, no, you want to stay in communication and you want to be in business with the person that's providing you the service for the long term. Okay. That way they're able to cover you in case the location doesn't do well, or, uh, for some strange reason, you have to relocate the machine. Remember these ATMs are considered floating assets guys. So at the end of the day, if it doesn't do well in one location, just move it to another location. It's part of business. Okay. Business doesn't always go a hundred percent through one solid line. If it did, everybody and their mom would be entrepreneurs. But unfortunately, it doesn't, and only the strong survive. But with that being said, you're able to build a successful business, guys. And take it from me, I've have managed dozens and dozens of people, run, uh, run uh, quite a bit of companies, and have the life experience to talk about this, where I can tell you building the right team with the right people is key, having the right tribe, okay? Don't think about investing it into services and a machine. No, think about it and investing it into a good solid team okay that's what you want to invest it into now with that being said uh once you have your llc your business bank account your atm your atm processing and then you have your location you are already 90 percent there now this is where really like the mentorship comes into play why because the mentor a mentorship or somebody who can guide you or help shadow you through this process is going to show you the, the tech skills they're going to show you how to uh fix a malfunction with the machine even though these machines don't really malfunction that often but when they do it's sort of tricky right because what you don't know is what you don't know and then also scaling your business at the end of the day no one is going to get rich off of one machine guys no might cover your bills it might cover a bill a couple bills right but it will not make you absolutely rich in order for you to get rich you need dozens upon dozens of machines okay and i'm talking about more than 30 machines uh we have teammates that have literally over 150 machines and they're clearing uh mid five figures okay halfway to the six figure mark a month in residual which is phenomenal it's life-changing money guys you guys are really able to live the life that you want if you do that but it takes work and it takes repetition so with that being said guys that is the fundamentals. Now, I have a great resource for you guys. If you guys want a free resource, go ahead and drop resources down in the comments below. We're gonna make sure to hook you up with either a free guide or a free mini course. Let's go into lesson number two. Now, three lessons that I've learned, I'm gonna go through this very quick just because we're running out of time here, guys. Three lessons that I learned in my ATM entrepreneurship in the past seven years is 